Now our final speaker is an artist, designer, and an adjunct professor at NYU. Please welcome up Ruby. All right, my name is Ruby Tello, um, and this is The Devil You Know, or my refutation of the instrumental convergence thesis, which is a central um, um, tenet of a lot of AI do scenarios. So um, in the field of AI alignment, um, researchers hope to steer AI systems towards, of course, the intended goals of humans. Usually through that research, they posit hypotheses as to how these systems will behave in the future. They do so um, based on this text called The Superintelligent Will by Nick Bostrom, in which he begins by telling us to avoid anthropomorphism, as well as um, uh, the idea that these future AI systems will be far less human in their motivations than um, space aliens. However, there's a fundamental error in a lot of these um, hypotheses, right? In the ICT, um, we assume human style rationality in an alien superintelligent uh, intelligent agent. This is like the, the image, right? Like it's not, <laughs> we are not the same. Um, this first example of difference is seen in Turing's early work, right? He says, machines surprise me frequently as a first example of that difference. The difference continues in other examples as well. Lisa Dahl plays against AlphaGo and move 37 of game number two is surprising, creative. Again, the machines surprise us. We can't predict their next move. He lost that game. Another example, of course, is OpenAI ran a, a simulation with coast runners, and instead of playing the game, the race game as it should, it started doing donuts and accumulating as much points as possible. Another example here of the machines not doing what they were supposed to do. They do not follow our legible human-style rationality. When we talk about instrumental convergence, we're talking about five things. The, the system will self-preserve, will try to keep its goal, uh, will try to enhance its uh, cognitive abilities, will try to perfect its technology, and will acquire more resources. Let's pause for a second and go back to Bostrom. Why did he posit that specific idea, right? He's a rationalist, a long-termist, an effective altruist, and as a rationalist, he has specific ideas as to what intelligence means. Specifically that, you know, it is the series of rational steps that one takes. Bostrom defines intelligence as instrumental rationality or prediction, planning, and means ends reasoning. But there's so many other ways that you could define intelligence, you know, emotional intelligence, artistic intelligence, so on and so forth. But he chooses that specific definition. Why? When a rationalist claims that a super intelligence will follow instrumental goals, that it will hoard resources, that it will crave power, that it will you know, try to perfect its, its, its intelligence, what are they saying? They are claiming that a super intelligence will be rational, i.e. like them. It is not the machine that they define, but rather it is their own um, sort of elevated idea of what they would do with that power. Thank you. <laughs> and it's a trap, right? Bostrom starts the essay by telling us, do not anthropomorph anthropomorphize these machines. But he does the same thing. What he describes is a machine with a human-style rational intelligence. He walks into his own trap. And they tell on themselves, because for how would you describe an individual who craves power and hoards resources? Is that not the, your garden-style level sociopath or the tyrant or the dictator, right? And this is the problem with sort of purely rational alignment thinking. We go back to Edmund Burke, 1791. He says, reason alone is an unreliable basis for moral action and has a tendency to be easily perverted. We see that problem come back from essentially 300 years and still it's being repeated here. For who else, right, having been brought into a new world would, in order to achieve their aims, tear it asunder, right? This is what this machine is supposed to do. I don't really believe it, frankly, and this is, this is the, whole, the whole point of this, of this, of this tirade. The truth is we don't know, right? Many types of intelligence exist, and they evade rationality, whether it be fungal intelligence, animal intelligence, and we mentioned the other sides of human intelligence that are not understood as a part of that model of how this agent will behave. And as a pure thought experiment, right, what would a misaligned, malevolent uh, superintelligence do? They would not follow rationality because then they'd be legible by humans if they want to achieve their aims. There's a little tautology, a little paradox there, even in the, um, the thesis itself. Thus, it is not a prediction that these researchers do when they describe these behaviors for these machines. Rather, it is a projection of their own future behaviors should they have that power and intelligence. 
they tell on themselves. And I end with this famous Latin quote, nota res mala opima, better the devil you know, are friendly AI researchers than a devil you don't, AI superintelligence. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.